Hey YouTube, today on In The Shop we have a Ford Super Duty in and we're going to be talking about a steering issue that commonly gets misdiagnosed. So I see this pretty often. Um, a lot of times they come in and it has an issue. You may relate, be able to relate to this. You're going down the highway and you turn left and it wants to stay left. You turn right and it wants to stay right. Or even sometimes you're just driving down the highway and you can just feel the wander back and forth. And commonly people will jack the truck up, they'll check the front end, everything in the front end is tight, so they naturally assume steering box. Um, this truck actually came to me after it had been to another shop, the other shop diagnosed it as a steering box. They put a steering box in it, which as you know is not cheap on one of these. Um, didn't fix the problem, so then they put a steering stabilizer in it, still didn't fix the problem, so that's how it ended up with me. Um, so what I've typically found is the cause of this is the universal joints in the front axle. So, let me uh, show you a quick way how I diagnose this to, to verify they're bad. So, we're working on a 2007 here, but this problem isn't limited to just 2007s or even this body style. Um, this can occur in anything from a 99 all the way up until current. So, the easiest way to diagnose this is to disconnect the steering and then lock the hub and manually try to turn the steering. So... On the 2005 and up, you're going to have to, I found the easiest way, is to disconnect the sway bar from both sides. It's going to be an 18mm bolt with a 21mm on the back side. And then pop the sway bar up and then take the tie rods off. Now on the passenger side here, you have the lower tie rod and you have the upper tie rod. <clears throat> the reason why you have to take the sway bar and push it up is because this upper tie rod the shaft is too long and you can't actually remove that from the knuckle without it interfering with the sway bar. So let's pop this steering off and then uh, I'll show you what to do next. All right, so we have our steering off. So the next step is going to be to lock the hubs. And then what you can do is turn, turn the whole knuckle left and right. So as you can see, this one moves pretty free. What I want to show you is if you turn this 90 degrees, it doesn't turn anymore. So what's happening is one side of the U-joint is frozen. Um, and this can be why sometimes this is an intermittent problem. Sometimes you'll drive it, the steering will be fine. You'll drive it again, the steering will be all over the place. And the reason why is because that U-joint is actually turning, getting to the spot where it moves nice and free. And then you drive down the road a little farther, turns again and it's frozen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this apart, get to the U-joint, and I'll kind of go over the procedure that I, I use to replace that. So to start taking this apart, first things first, we got to get these brakes off of here. Um, some people choose to separate the caliper from the bracket and then take everything off individually. I like to take it off in one piece. The biggest thing you have to watch out for is you have to make sure that you have a way to support this caliper so it's not hanging from the hose. Because if you leave it hanging from the hose, you can do damage to it. Sometimes it's damage that you can't see. And then down the road, you're driving and the hose collapses internally. And that's how you can get calipers seizing. Um, one of the most common causes of caliper failure is 
hose failure. So it's just something you want to be really delicate around these hoses. They're not designed to take any kind of weight. So uh, just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get this caliper off. Two 21 millimeter bolts. You're gonna need a fairly strong impact if they've never been off. Uh, a lot of times they're on there really tight. So next up is going to be the locking hub. So this is three T25 Torx bits. And then once you get the three Torx bits out, you can use like a little flathead screwdriver and just kind of gently pry it out around here. You want to be really careful and make sure you go out straight. So just do a little bit at a time all the way around, pulling it out. And uh, after that, we'll show you what's next. Next up is going to be this snap ring that's inside the uh, inside the hub bearing. Um, you're gonna really want to get a nice sturdy pair of snap ring pliers. I have a set of Cornwell, but um, you can definitely, you can get a nice set on Amazon or anything like that. If I, uh, if I can find a set, I'll put a link in the description. Um, you just want to make sure that they have a decent reach and they're nice and sturdy. Um, this snap ring can be really tough to get off, so just be patient. Make sure you're fully inserted into the little holes in the snap ring. Take your time and uh, it'll come off. So now we're going to move on to the ABS sensor. So what you need to do first is disconnect it from behind the inner fender. You'll see there's a little tab that it goes into and you just need to unplug the sensor and then it attaches onto the uh, suspension right here. If you can just unclip that, pull the wire out, then there's another little tab right there. Pop it out of there. Then you have two bolts that hold it on to like the bottom of the spring perch. They're eight millimeter bolts. Um, pop those out. And then there's one more eight millimeter bolt on top of the knuckle. Now, I like to leave the speed sensor, the ABS sensor, in the hub only because I've had a lot of bad experiences trying to take that sensor out of the hub and then the sensor breaks, um, then you're replacing the sensor needlessly. I mean, if you don't need a wheel bearing and you don't need a sensor, we're just attacking the U-joint right now. There's no sense in, in destroying other parts. So let's get this ABS sensor out, and then we can work on unbolting the hub bearing. Now we're going to take off these nuts to hold the the hub itself in. They're a 21 millimeter. On the 05 and up, it's it's pretty easy to get a socket straight in there. So with the wheel turned all the way or the knuckle turned all the way, you can get a socket right on the nuts. On the 99 to 04, the the little seal that I'm going to show you about changing later on has like a metal ring on it and that metal ring can sometimes get in the way of the socket on the nut depending on how thick wall the socket you have but don't worry about that too much if you got to use a small I mean very small hammer and just tap it on it'll push the little metal piece to the side and the socket will go right on but take those four nuts off of the hub and then um, I'll go over a few tricks that I use to get these hubs off of here when they're stuck on um, these look like they're fairly new, so I don't think they'll fight me too much, but if you don't have any experience with these hubs, um, you'll learn pretty quick that they're going to either come right off or you're going to have some issues. All right, so if you're struggling to get your hub off, which is not very uncommon, I mean, it's, it's probably going to happen if you haven't had these off, um, there's a couple of options you have. You can either go at it with a hammer which 
frankly takes forever and 99% of the time you're going to ruin the wheel bearing. Or there's a couple of tricks. Uh, one of them, this is what I found has been the easiest way, but um, it does sometimes risk damaging the bearing only because of the way that it, it works. But this tool from ATD, um, I'll put a link in the description. This is awesome if you're trying to take a wheel bearing out to change it um, or, you know, ball joints or even a U-joint job like this. So how it works is you put it on the studs and then it comes with this kit with all different size nuts to fit different applications. And what you do is you thread these nuts on and then you smash right here with a hammer. Um, it loosens the hub right up. I mean, this this works very, very well. Sometimes you do have to turn it sideways, hit it this way, turn it back this way, hit it this way a couple of times, but I really haven't had a hub that this didn't work on. Um, that being said, if you don't have access to one of these, one of the other options is to take a socket, a deep socket, and put it between the put it between the U-joint and the axle tube. So you take the socket, put it in between the U-joint and the axle tube, and then hook the steering back up, start the truck, and use the power steering to push the bearing out. This is a lot easier if you have a buddy to help you. Put the socket in, you turn the wheel, just make sure that you get your hands out of there while the wheel is turning. Um, there are some pinch points in there. But this trick works really well. It's uh, this, this also has never failed me. The only thing I don't really like about it is it does push against the back side of the wheel bearing a little bit. All right, so all that's really left to get at this U-joint is to pop this axle shaft out of here. Um, this big seal right here is sometimes difficult to get out. Um, so how I like to do it is I like to take a big pry bar and I like to pry behind the axle. You'll see that there's a little lip between the actual axle and the axle tube. And if you get that pry bar behind there, you can just give it a good pull and it'll pop the axle and the seal out all together. Um, sometimes on a real stubborn one that hasn't been apart, you might need a pry bar on each side, which you can do by yourself, but it's a lot easier with two people. All right, so here it is. We got this axle out, and as you can see, the this U-joint moves nice and smooth this way, but the other direction, it's just stuck. I mean, you can see I can let go, and it falls all on its own, but this direction, I mean, it's it's frozen solid. So it's you know it's hard to say what causes this. I mean, this is a greasable U-joint. It definitely looks like it was it was greased. I mean, it's got some grease coming out. I don't know if maybe it was too late on this particular one. Someone tried to grease it afterwards. But um, the biggest suggestion I have is use a good quality U-joint. Um, especially if you do have a greasable joint, make sure that you are greasing it in regular intervals. The greasable U-joints tend to have looser seals, which um, they're designed that way. So that way, as you pump grease into it, it'll allow the grease to push the water and contaminants out. Um, now, a sealed U-joint, a lifetime lubricated U-joint, the seals are a little bit tighter. So there's pros and cons to both. If you're the type of person that you're just not going to do it, I mean, be honest with yourself. If you're not going to grease it, I would put the non-greasable U-joints in here. Um, if you're the type of person that has the old farmer's attitude where they say grease is cheaper than parts and you plan on greasing this often, um, the greasable U-joints are great. Uh, just go with a good quality name brand. They're not cheap, but I... Uh, the, the payoff in the, in the long term is better than having to do this job twice. All right, so let's go over how I do these U-joints. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to get this seal off out of your way. It's just pressed onto there. So 
Take a little hammer. Give it a couple of wax all the way around. Get that off of there. So the next step is, I think this is probably the hardest part of doing these. So retaining these U-joints into these little tiny clips. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a little C-clip. And that goes on the inside of the cap. So on the inside of the ear of the shaft are where these little clips go on. Um, you're going to cuss. They're not fun. Uh, sometimes they come right off. These probably won't be that bad, like the wheel bearing. You know, they're not that old, but um, sometimes when these things are really rusted on there, they they can be a real problem to get out. So I just use a small hammer, a couple of chisels and punches, and just kind of work them around and just knock all four of these clips right off of these U joints. There are a few different techniques to uh, swapping out U-joints. Um, everybody has their own way, but my personal preference is to use a ball joint press. So what you do is you use an adapter that the U-joint cap will fit through. Put that on this end. Then you just use this round end of the other side and... Tighten that up and start to push the U-joint right through. Now, the only suggestion I have to you when using a ball joint press is just be careful not to continue on too far because you can do damage to the ears of the shaft. Um, and just, just go nice and easy. You'll feel it. Once you have some experience, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But you can rent a ball joint press from, I, I believe, AutoZone as a tool rental. Um, and you can actually clamp this right in a vise. And that'll hold this steady. Then you only have to hold on to the axle shaft. I, prefer, I personally just like to put it on the bench, use a couple of blocks of wood, and uh, go that way. But So you push one side through. Then you can take this cap off. This one's actually a little frozen on here. And sometimes, like this application here, I'm gonna have to grab a pair of vice grips and just wrench that out. So get one side out, then Flip it over, and push the U-joint back through the opposite direction. Now go ahead and use that same technique to get the rest of the U-joint out of the end stub. So this is the part of the U-joint that was frozen. So it's rusted into this cap and rusted into this cap. Actually, this one moves pretty free, so it seems as though it's really only this cap. It's going to be difficult to come off. So sometimes put it in a vise, hit it with a hammer. Worst case scenario, you take an air chisel, you get in a little groove where the clip went, and you can just kind of repetitively hit that cap and eventually this will work off. It's going to be absolutely full of rust. So be patient. Just keep working at it. Get this cap off of here and then do the same thing like on the other part of the shaft and push the U-joint the rest of the way through. Take that cap off and then the U-joint's out.
reassembly is fairly straightforward. Um, how I like to do it is, first of all, make sure you orient the U-joint the proper way. So if you are using one that has a grease fitting on it, don't put the grease fitting in until you're all done because pushing it back and forth can break the grease fitting off and then you basically have to get another U-joint unless you're really good at extracting. But what I like to do is make sure that the grease fitting is in the proper spot for the direction the axle shaft travels. So in other words, if you know that this axle, sh axle shaft is rotating this way, you want to make sure that the cap that's in front of the grease fitting goes in the axle shaft. That way, as it's rotating, the force is pushing together instead of trying to separate apart where this grease fitting is. It just makes for a stronger joint. Um, I've never seen a joint fail in a normal operation, but I mean, if you're using your truck for four-wheel drive launches, drag racing, uh, I mean, who knows what you're doing with your truck, but it can definitely affect the strength of it if you have the grease fitting in the wrong spot. So I take two of the caps off. Now you need to be very careful to make sure that you don't roll any of the needle bearings over. So take a cap off, feed the U-joint through, and then reinstall one of the caps. Then what you can do is take the ball joint press again and push push the U-joint almost completely out. So you want to push it all the way through and then so almost so this cap comes out of the ear. That way you can get the clip on nice and easy and then you can get the cap from the opposite side on nice and easy. So now you can take the new C-clip, push it onto the cap. Now you're going to want to make sure if you look at the, the ear of the, of the axle shaft, there's a little notch right here. If you don't line that C-clip up properly, it won't fit over that notch. It's kind of hard to show in the camera, but you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There's like a little shelf right here where that c-clip can fit into um, and if you have this rotated too much one way it'll hold up on that and then you can't push the u-joint all the way through so now that you have this you want to slide the u-joint out just a little bit throw the other cap on sometimes they're a little crooked so you just gotta give a little tap to straighten it out And then use the ball joint press once again and push this all the way through until this touches. After you get that pushed all the way through, now you can take the clip that goes on the inside and put that on. It can be a little more tricky now, so. Sometimes you got to use a hammer and tap it on. Then repeat the same process for the outside stub. So a common thing to happen is you're going to get this all together and you're going to feel maybe it goes smooth, but it just feels a little tight in some spots or in one way. If it's notchy, that's not good. If it's just a little tight, what you can do is stand the axle up vertically and just give right here on the ear a little whack. So just take a little hammer, give a little whack. Flip it over this way, 
give a little whack, and it frees right up. What happens is the ears sometimes compress in a little bit, and they put a little bit of tension on the inside of the U-joint, and it binds it up. So you just want to make sure it's nice and free. I mean, there should be some resistance. It's a brand new U-joint. It is tight, but you want to make sure it's nice and free in both directions, and you're good to go. Make sure you remember to install that grease fitting before you put it in the truck, and then we're going to put the seals on. There's a seal that goes here. There's a seal that goes in the actual axle housing. We're going to get those done, then we're good to go. Reassembly. All right, so there's a few seals you got to do while you have this all apart. Um, one of them is this dust seal. Now, what this does is it goes into the axle tube. You may see the old ones went on the axle shaft itself. Sometimes you'll see if you look a lot of these older trucks, you get uh, like a piece of rubber just flopping around because it fell off. So they've updated it to this seal that actually fits into the axle tube itself. Um, this keeps dust, dirt, and everything out of that tube. So the other seal you need to replace, very important, especially if you have a uh, vacuum 4x4, is, is this kit right here. So I highly suggest getting this from Ford. I'll put a link in the description to as many of these parts as I possibly can. But this kit comes with a new C-clip, the snap ring, I mean, that holds the axle into the wheel bearing. comes with a new rubber o-ring for the wheel bearing itself where that seals into the housing comes with new nuts that hold the wheel bearing on and it comes with the stuff you need to seal up the uh, 4x4 hub and three new bolts for the 4x4 hub so that's pretty nice but it also the most important part is this big donut seal right here so a lot of times if this doesn't get replaced or it gets improperly installed this is where you can have those 4x4 issues where if you have automatic 4x4, you turn it on and the light goes on in the dash, the drive shaft engages, but the 4x4 hubs themselves don't. So this, you got to make sure that you install this properly. Now, you can do it without the special tool. Um, you're going to be very gentle, use like a round punch, brass punch or drift and just slightly work it all the way around. Um, I found it very hard. If this is something that you plan on doing more than once, definitely want to get the tool. So, the tool looks like this. Now what this does is the seal fits perfectly in it and then it fits perfectly over the axle and you hit it and it installs the seal exactly to the right depth perfectly how it's supposed to be, no issues, doesn't damage the seal whatsoever. And then, once you're done with that, you use the same tool to, after you get the axle slid in, use this tool to drive the seal into the, into the knuckle. So, all that tension that you had trying to release it, trying to pull it out, is the same tension you need to, to put it back in. Some people will suck it back in with the wheel bearing, but what happens is this seal is designed to rotate, and if you push this right up against the wheel bearing, it pushes against itself and starts to tear itself apart. And then it'll overheat, and sometimes you'll pull one of these apart that you'll see somebody installed using the wheel bearing to push it in, and you'll see all these rubber and plastic fibers inside there, because as the wheel bearing was going, it was heating up, and this was spinning, it was just wearing away at the seal, wearing away at the seal, and then that's, like I said, improper installation. You, uh, you get a 4x4 four four lack of operation. All right, once you get these seals changed out, um, don't forget to put a, pump, a couple of pumps of grease in the U-joint. Um, and then you can just slide this axle shaft right back in. can be a little tricky sometimes to get it started, to get it into the splines of the uh, differential, but just be patient, wiggle it back and forth, spin it, slide it in, and now this is where that tool comes back into play. So, slide that tool back over, and you'll see there's a gap. Now they make, the tool is different from 99 to 04, 
and then O5 and up is another tool. And then if you have O5 and up, F450 and 550 with the wide track front end, there's another tool that is the same setup, but it's got a little bit more depth on it because the knuckle actually has a little more depth to it. So, so slide that tool on, and then you want to hit the tool until this sits flush with the bearing mounting surface. So, let's get this thing all back together and uh, take it for a test drive. guys so I really hope you found this video helpful um, it's a pretty common problem that that often goes misdiagnosed like I said earlier in the video so um, yeah, I mean you guys know well if you've owned these trucks for a little while these things can get pretty expensive so try to focus on diagnosing things the proper way making sure you find the actual cause of what's going on before you start putting parts in these um, and if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out to me in the comments section uh, if you have any questions about the tools or the parts I used, I'm going to try to link as many of them as I can in the description of this video so you can try to find that stuff easily. And, um, you know, if this video is helpful, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, maybe give me a like, say what's up in the comments, whatever, whatever makes you happy. But, hey guys, I really appreciate you watching, taking your time out of the day to, uh, to see what I do here. So, um, once again, thanks for watching In the Shop.